Happy Sabbath. How many of you have been glad to be back in our own church after being gone for a couple of Sabbaths? How many were happy for camp meeting? Well, I slept in my car for eight nights. Not exactly the Hilton Hotel. But I survived. So I praise God. Today is going to be a combination of camp meeting, combination of my uh, testimony, and a challenge to each one of us today to follow Jesus and share Jesus. Hello, it's working now? Okay, good. I'm going to start off by sharing what happened to me three weeks ago. Most of you know that I have glow tracks in my pocket and my uh, chore and love is on it, going to the park down the road eating my lunch and uh, going talking to people. It's kind of cold uh, two or three Sabbaths ago, so I, I couldn't uh, go up in the, in the woods and find a nice place to camp out. So I went down to the basketball court and uh, there was two folks with white shirts on with little badges. you have any idea what that might be? Two young people from the Church of the Latter-day Saints. So I, I just about finished my eating my lunch and they came up and started wanting to talk to me. And if you've ever had a dialogue with one of my Mormon friends, it, it can go different directions. And the first thing I said to these young men, one 18, another one's about 21, do you love Jesus? Do you know Jesus? Do you follow Jesus? And what do you think they said to me? Yes, yes. I said, that's nice. For about the next 20 minutes, we went back and forth on different subject matters. And I ended the discussion with these young men. I says, can I pray for you? And I ended in Jesus' name, obviously. And then I invited them to come back on this Sabbath. They didn't show up today, but that's okay. But uh, I love to find people They'll want to talk about my best friend. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Amen? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you're so awesome. Thank you for sending your son down to this earth to be our Savior, our God, our, our Redeemer, and soon coming deliverer, going home. Send your Holy Spirit now to bless us all and help me in Jesus' name. Amen. This track I've got is in the Signs of the Times. It says, A Love Letter from Jesus. If you're inspired to want a couple of these, I have a few in my pocket. But if you want to introduce someone to Jesus and they have no clue about Jesus, Ryan bought me these things down at Camp Meeting, right, Ryan? And I took a quick look at that. And I said, wow, this is really good. I've never seen something like this before that I can actually talk about something like Jesus and I can actually give them something and they're going to walk away and they've got something that goes from A to C about Jesus. Good, good idea. So the love letter that I'm bringing to you today is a little bit of this, a little bit of camp meeting, and a little bit of my, my, my experiences this week. But God loves each one of us. Do you believe that? You are extremely important on God's front list because you're a child of the king. Amen? You are literally a child of the king. Jesus loves you so much that he went to Calvary. And when I see this, if you come to my house sometime, on my baptism, I got a beautiful picture hanging on my wall as the crucifixion of Christ, and then the different other steps of his ministry going down to the second coming. And when I'm reading, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll glance up to the wall to, to Calvary, and I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. What love that you had that you did this for me, a wretch like me. Amen? 
unworthy as I am, you did this for me. To take me out of a life of sin, to serve you, because what you did on this earth is a, a prescription of what you want us to do. Seek and save the lost. Amen? I don't know where you were when God found you, when he sent his son to tug on you and say, you're mine, my young lady, my sister, my brother. I want you to come and follow me. I've, I've got a better life for you. I don't know where you were when that happened, but there are absolutely incredible amount of people out there that are hurting. Do you believe that? And as we go down, I'm not going to go into politics, but as we go down this earth's history, this road, the journey before Jesus comes back, we're going to have a lot of bumps in the road. And we are positioned as Christians to know the end of the story. Amen? And when we know the end of the story, it's good news, but we've got some bumps to go through until we see all that good news. And once we find the end of the story, I want you to keep your eyes on that. So I don't want you to get embedded into the negatives of this world because we've got a Savior that wants to set you free. His truth to set us free is what we are going to look at today. I want you to open your Bibles again to Matthew. I don't have a lot of scripture today. I've got a number of testimonies to share with you today. But this, this is the prime scripture today in Matthew chapter 5. Now look very carefully in verse 14 first. You are the light of the world. Have you ever thought about that for yourself? You individually are the light of the world. What might that mean? Any ideas? Okay, I'm being interactive with you. Thank you, Denver. Any other suggestions? What might that mean? Okay, thank you, Becky. Any other thoughts? I'll leave it there. Bruce is the light of my neighborhood. Yes or no? And if Bruce does not share his light, and we're going to look at a couple different ways here, what are they going to know? Uh, if you go to one of the most prominent people on the Bevelin Fork that has much land, he calls me a preacher. He introduces his family to me as a preacher. I don't know if I like that or not, but <laughs> that's what he does. A few weeks ago, we were out bailing hay. So he says, come on, let's go get in the truck and we're going to go. Have you ever seen how they bale hay? Kind of interesting. You know, I, I sat and watched that for a while. 800 pounds when those things are rolled like this. You need a big forklift to go in there, pick them up, put them on the truck, and go off. But Bill's wife is a Christian, and Bill is not a Christian. So who do you think is in my prayer list more? It's Bill. I want to see Bill in the kingdom. Amen? Now, I want you to go down to verse uh, 16. Let your light, put your name there, so shine before men that they may see your good works. That's how you live. That's what you do, etc. And glorify your Father which is in heaven. What an opportunity. How many of you love serving Jesus? Is that, a, is that a bore? Is that a chore? Is that something you, do you, you look forward to? Where you really have an opportunity. And by the way, when I wake up in the morning, first thing I say, Lord, I love you. I love you before my feet hit the ground. Lord, I'm yours today. I can't give you my heart. Take it. Allow me to work for you Today, I used to put something like this in, in my prayer list. Lord, I don't know who you have to send me to today, but send me to somebody that's waiting to hear about you. 
Friends, we got good news, amen? We really do have good news. We talked in our Sally School lesson about the crucible of being a Christian. Um, we talk too much about our enemy. We need to talk more about our Lord, amen? Satan is not omnipresent. God is omnipresent. You know what I'm saying there? So when you think about the good news, a love letter from Jesus means my security, my safety, the best friend in the world I could have that does not let me down. Amen? Does not let me down. So, as I see Jesus' words, or hear Jesus' words, it challenges me to share him with others. My story, how he's blessed me, and invite them to experience the love I'm sharing with them now and the care of God for their salvation and their reconciliation to God. Okay. At a camp meeting, I didn't expect to have a, a theme of go tell somebody about Jesus. That was the camp meeting theme. That's one of my favorite stories, you see? What God has done for me compels me Paul says, motivates me to go tell others about Jesus. Why should we want to tell others about Jesus on the first contact with them? If they know Jesus, are they going to be more open for hearing other things? If they don't know Jesus, they're going to be lost on what you're talking about. But if you start to talk about Jesus, the Holy Spirit is working. And that's how you reflect Jesus to other people is how they will start to answer what you're saying to them and want, maybe quickly, what you got. So the song went like this. I actually... I don't know how many of you were at camp meeting. I actually took the song <laughs> that's written out for me like this. And if you follow anything I read, I always mark it up. Who will go and tell the story? That's the start of the song here. It's got three parts of the song that I want to share with you here. Pray that God will use you and send you to somebody that is ready to hear the word. First prayer. God, please, I don't want a combative person to talk to today. I want somebody that is open, that wants to know about Jesus. Is that a better person you want to talk to? I've talked to a lot of combative people <laughs> that weren't Christians that didn't want to hear it. But if you are led to somebody, and I, I'll share that with two or three people with you in a moment, that I believe that the Holy Spirit had prepared their hearts before I even got there to hear what I was going to share. Then you have an open heart. And, and that, that, that's a good thing. The song goes on to say, side by side with Jesus walking can my actions do the talking? Look what he's done for me. I want to tell my life sing. When I see him at the cross, my heart is overwhelmed with love. Hmm. Think about this for a second. We might not uplift the story of Calvary as much as we should. But when Calvary is, and what Jesus did on that cross for you and for me, starts to resonate in our hearts to the extent of what Christ went through on this earth for 33 and a half years. And what he went through for the last week is literal hell, beyond our comprehension. He died the second death. That means when he went into the grave on Friday night, he had no idea whether he was even going to be resurrected again. That's what he did for you and for me. If it means that I'm lost forever to save Bruce, I'm going to do it. Amen? That's the love and the power of what God did for you and me. So, very important to me. 
Very important. The third part of this song says, send me to your lambs calling in need. Can you help me? Many are crying out now. Do you, we believe that? Do we believe? Sister White says that there are many looking to heaven, whispering, uh, whispering basically, Lord, I don't know the way. Please send some unto me that I can share Jesus with because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one gets to the Father but by him. Amen? So when we think about the beauty of our God to give up his son to come down to this earth is beyond my comprehension. So when you see uh, the unconditional love that he's done for us and how he's drawn us to the light, and that's Jesus, we want to let our light shine. Now, if you're anything like me, I'm, I'm saying maybe this is a good thing. We need to study our Bibles, amen? We really do need to spend time in our Bibles. And we really do need to spend time on our knees. I can't do that anymore. My hip wipes me out. But the connection that we have with our God is going to make a difference on how he can use us. Amen? So, when I finish my prayer before I eat in the morning, I said, Lord, let me go into your presence. Take me into your presence. So I, when I read, I always read my Sabbath school lesson, Ryan, while I'm eating breakfast, by the way. <laughs> I don't miss out of the good things. So um, I, want, I want to know what God's got in store for me. I actually want to go into a connection with him so he can use me to shine out to others by our lives, by our words, and by our actions. Those three areas, by our lives, by our words, and by our actions, will tell the world that you're a Christian or not. Amen? That will tell others that you are a Christian. And we want them to know we're a Christian. Amen? This is a good thing. It's not something we should be ashamed about. Amen? Let it shine. Let it shine. So, when I'm in God's Word, we're told in God's word that we're to bring every thought into captivity to Christ. When the evil one is chasing you and, and tempting you to do things you should not do that are not scripturally based, run it up flagpole with your Lord saying, Lord, that's not in your word. Please put things into my heart that are Christ-like. And may that override what's actually being impregnated into my brain. So my thoughts and my life, once I'm walking with the Lord, that cannot be hidden. That absolutely cannot be hidden. Our light will shine because it's attractive. Now I want you to go to John 12. And this is Jesus' words in verse 32, John 12. And he says, and I, and I be lifted up from the earth will draw what? All, all, all people, I'll, I'll, I'll use the right pronoun, all people to him, amen? Boys and girls, men and women, all will be drawn to him if I, if I be lifted up. And thank you, Becky, for sharing that they might be, I might be the only Christian they'll ever see, amen? That's what you said? Bible. Or a Bible? Is that true? <laughs> yeah, it's true. You bet your life it's true. So, we have a simple duty. Is once we fall in love with Jesus, that's the reason that brought you here to church, by the way. 
I don't think you'd be here today if you didn't love Jesus. Amen? If, you, if I was preaching about some crazy thing out in right field, that would not attract people to want to come here. But if I'm uplifting my Savior, that should be an attraction that all of us would want to be here because we want to be in his presence on the Sabbath, especially of all the days of the week. So, are you willing to tell somebody about Jesus? I'll let you answer that question yourself. So, when I was at camp meeting, Ryan, I'm not sure what, how you brought this to my attention, but Ryan went back and he bought one of these packets for me, and I started reading this, pull it out, marking it up, and I said, this is very simple, biblically um, based. It shares with you exactly who Jesus is and all about him. Not a bad little track. So we went back and got the hundred, and then I thought to myself, they are trying to tell me at camp meeting that I need to tell somebody about Jesus. Well, how do you do it? Are you tongue-tied when you talk to people? On a scriptural, on a spiritual basis? I'm not tongue-tied. Some of us might be a little bit resident of uh, wanting to open up and uh, share with this subject matter. So I took this to D.W., one of the pastors of the conference, and I said, D.W., this needs to be given out. The conference bought 300, Ryan, 300 of these things. And on Sabbath, each one of you, did you guys get them? Now, here's my challenge. For some of you that I brought, I, I have two, four, six. I have six. Any of you that uh, want to know more about Jesus, come and see me. The first six, get a free copy, okay? <laughs> a little teaser for you guys. So, um, I was really happy that they did that. I was super happy when they did that. If followed, this track will introduce the person to your best friend. Amen? Now, I want to go real time, and I want to put what I just learned in, in camp meeting into real life practice. And if you know me, what am I going to do if I got these in my pocket? You got any ideas? Am I going to share them with others? Am I that bold to do that? Uh, I went back to camp meeting. I had, no, I had hardly little food in my house, refrigerator. And uh, on Highway 33, coming back from Elkins, I stopped at Walmart. So I'm always talking to the cash register. I'm looking at their name, I want to find their name. And I'm starting making chit chat, a small conversation with them. And uh, I pulled this out of my pocket. Actually, I laid it on, on, right about where I'm going to pay my bill. And I said, you know what? I've got something for you. This is a note from my best friend to you. You think he turned me down? No. I did my job. I'm out of there. Uh, so that was the first one. And in, in, in addition to that, my friend here who works at the DMV, uh, you got some good people working there, by the way, including yourself. <laughs> including yourself. Um, these, I walked in there, I had a big line. I thought, I I'm there for renewing my license. I've got to get an update on this subject matter. Because my birthday, and by the way, if you weren't here for Sabbath school, those that are uh, waiting to get to be 75, and, and the marbles in a thing here, well, 75 hits me next weekend. And uh, I praise God that he's given me a decent long life. Hallelujah. Amen? So I started talking to the people in front of me. And uh, I pulled this out again. And we're, and we're making small talk with the people in line. They have nothing better to do anyway. You know, they've got to chill out for a few minutes until they get up there and get checked in. So I gave it to them. 
And we both had to go over to where they take the picture, photo IDs for your driver's license. And he pulled it out and he had it like this. And his lady friend, they were reading it. I said, hallelujah, <laughs> home run. And we, we have somebody here that's seeking Jesus. Well, I had to sit down until my number was called. And uh, I sat down next to a veteran that had a disabled veteran cap on. And you know what, what I'm gonna do with this one. Uh, well, I'm not disabled, but I am a Vietnam era veteran. So um, I went up and started talking with him. And I gave it to him and he said, thank you very much. I am a deacon in my church and I play the organ. Praise God. Went up to the lady who was taking care of me and I pulled another one out. And I, and I laid it right down there where you've got a sign on your, where the, the little fake thing for <laughs> your signature for your driver's license. And I said, this is for being so kind to me. Praise God. Praise God. Three seeds planted. I praise God for that. In addition to those on the outside of this church, we have got a responsibility for those inside the church. You believe that? Down at camp, I'm sitting in my chair and I'm looking out and I'm looking at this man sit down by himself. Nobody came up and said anything to him and the Holy Spirit impressed me, go talk to him. I went up and talked to him. His name was Terry. I want you to keep Terry in your prayers. His wife just left him last Tuesday. And he was bummed out to say the least. So I sat down and I talked to him for about 10, 15 minutes. Tried to give him some hope. What I would do with somebody that doesn't know Jesus. And now I'm a representative of Jesus. And he is a baby in Christ helping him out. After that was done, I went to the back of the auditorium. I, I love camp meeting because the, I love sitting and looking at the mountains. Uh, I'm, I'm a mountain person. I love it beyond belief. And camp meeting, the hills are so beautiful. We say amen to that. What, what a location for a retreat. And I just sit down looking out. And this man is the next seat over from me. And he starts talking to me. And okay, you want to talk? Ended up being, his name is Michael. He asked me a question after question after question. Am I God's light? Are they to see my good works and glorify my Father in heaven? If I am impressed to go out of my way to somebody that's hurting, and both these people were hurting, and both of these people had problems that I've gone through personally, so I guess I was the right person to talk to these people about something, something good, some better news for them. So I believe that we have an opportunity now to let our light shine. Are you in? Are you in? This is between you and God. I'm, I'm going to end up with one scripture. I told you this was not going to be many scriptures today. This is mostly my testimony. I want you to go to John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and I'm going to read verse 9. John, chapter 1, verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Do you realize our job as Seventh-day Adventist Christians is to do the exact same thing Jesus did and not seek and to save the lost. With gusto. With gusto. We have a mission, just like I had a mission when I was in the military. I knew what that mission was very clearly. And uh, I know what my responsibility is to my God. And you want to know something, friends? I experience a tremendous amount of joy when I can hit a home run with a soul that's looking to know about Jesus. Amen? We have a responsibility to share his love 
and lift him up. And I'm hoping and praying for each one of you folks today that you will be a person that will fall in love with Jesus. And you will make him your first, your best, and your last friend in your life. Amen? Unreplaceable. Unreplaceable. And if you do, you will be the happiest Christian in this church. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father,